All right, Shannon Blogs continuing with 31 Days of Horror, and day eight is The Screaming Skull! The Screaming Skull! Ah! <laughs> hey everyone, it's Shannon, and I'm continuing on my 31 Days of Horror with another unseen horror movie. This one is part of my 50 horror classics collection and I just go to the next one on the next disc or the next one on the same disc and this time it was The Screaming Skull. Now this film is from 1959. Woo! Woo! Hope that stays. Um, from 1955 it's a black and white movie. It is a horror movie It's but it has a bit more of a drama feel to it um and where it, the sort of situation that it takes place in is that there's a newly married couple and you know the guy's really romantic so what he does is he brings his new wife to his old dead wife's like house because that's where you'd want to go right on honeymoon weird anyway <laughs> that being said <laughs> she's very gracious <laughs> um and <laughs> on on going there and with actually with everything for me the real highlight of the movie was uh her character and she was just the acting was really good and um most of it really is her um and yeah so okay so my first question is is this a horror movie and i would actually say yes because it's a supernatural movie and for me those are like default horror there's a couple that are dramas but generally they're horror movies you know it's got a, a bit of a haunted house vibe to it uh you know and a lot of sort of creepy things happening so definitely tick box of the horror and then next up was it scary and I, I would actually say a little because this has some really good tension and some creepy scenes and personally I really like haunted house type movies so that always works in my favor <laughs> in terms of <laughs> whether or not I get scared um supernatural films are definitely higher than other films in, in the scare factor and so I would say a little like it's mostly dramatic uh you know lots of talking and lots of people sharing their personal histories and, you know, getting to know each other and stuff like that. But, um, you know, everyday stuff. But then when it does get the sort of supernatural vibe going on, you know, it, I think it go gets pretty creepy. Um, and next up is, did I enjoy it? And I would actually say surprisingly so. I think the, because the acting being pretty good and the story being interesting and, and the location, although it's creepy and weird, is actually pretty cool. And in terms of the story, I, uh, and I thought it was quite well done. And it's really weird because I went and looked and apparently it's not very well received, even by people that were involved in it. And I actually thought it was quite enjoyable because I ended up giving it an 8 out of 10. <laughs> you know, like, quality-wise it might be more of a 7, but I enjoyed it a lot. So that's kind of weird. And I will say, though, that I did fall asleep a few times trying to get through it. But that's, you know, way more about me being tired than about the movie itself. No, be, but it is a dramatic movie that's mostly talking, so that's a lot easier to fall asleep to than, like, crazy action in your face all the time. So, yeah. Um, there are also some really funny things about it, including that they had, like, a, a Valorian, is that the right term, a Valorian car, like, from Back to the Future, where the the doors go up from the side and it felt completely anachronistic but of course it can't be because it's shot in its current day of 1959 and they had that car but I guess maybe they just didn't you know continue that idea I didn't know that I actually had them back then so that was really really funny um and it was much more of a quieter dramatic film but I did appreciate that I think it's nice to vary especially when you're doing this kind of thing where you're watching lots of this similar things. I love that. I love the countdowns and marathons and that kind of stuff. But I think getting some variety really helps because otherwise you just sort of see the same thing over and over. I think it's more fun to mix it up a little bit. So it wasn't the best movie, that's for sure, but I did enjoy it a lot. And I did end up doing a picture for it or drawing the screaming skull. Yeah, and then a little more there. There's my screaming skull. I did not have tons of luck with the skulls. That one looks a little bit better, you know, but that one looks a little weird. I think it looks a little bit more like a mouth with like lines in it. Skulls are harder than I thought. It's so easy to, it's like the cartoony version of a skull feels pretty like I could probably do that, but like to get one that looks a little more realistic, 
felt challenging. Felt challenging to me. So I guess I don't have too much to say about the Screaming Skull, but I do have a couple things for the spoiler zone. So if you have seen it and or you're not concerned about spoilers, and I'm really gonna like I'm gonna get right down to it, right to the end. So if you don't want to know that, we'll just see you in the next video. Otherwise, we're going to go into the spoiler zone in three, two, one. Spoiler alert. Um. So yeah, like my husband's kind of a jerk. <laughs> I couldn't believe. I had no idea. I can't believe I didn't suspect him at all. Maybe like a little bit, like a smidge of a bit, but because this was a supernatural movie, I wasn't looking at the humans. I was trying to find the supernatural story. And so like when it was kind of when it was revealed like that it was him, I was like, oh my god jerk but then also it didn't make sense because a lot of the things that happened really actually felt supernatural not simply that he had set them up so although it was a great sort of twist on the whodunit i didn't understand all of who did it and then it actually turned back to being supernatural because the skull sort of goes for him so i'm gonna like how is this how is this well and some of the stuff is like how could he have pulled that off he burns a picture and then there's a skull did he know that would happen? <laughs> Crazy. And do peacocks really screech like that? That's another question. If anyone knows the answer to if peacocks make that noise, I would love to know the answer to that question. Oh my god. But the screaming skull, it was a lot of fun. Um, you know, I, I didn't anticipate uh, enjoying it as much as I did. The only other thing that was a little like, mm, was the character of Mickey who's the sort of helper and he's in love with the uh, main guys, like the old, the woman who died. And his character is like slow and it's a little, like it's, the, for the time it's not bad, but I was a bit challenging and didn't quite go as far as offensive. I don't think he was offensive. He wasn't offensive, he, I, but I don't, it's a challenging thing to depict. Um, and I think they did an okay job or a good job given the time, but that is a challenge um, in films. And I don't know why they did that. I guess to make it less him, less clear, which is that's kind of, I was going to say a word I don't normally say. Um, that's kind of, I can't think of another word. <laughs> it's a, well, on a, on a different tone, it's a bit of a writing cop out. So uh, <laughs> that's, you know, which is kind of, you know, jerky. Let's say jerky. <laughs> instead of the word the other word so yeah um <laughs> anyway but other than that i did enjoy the screaming skull uh more than i anticipated so if you have seen it i'd love to hear your thoughts on the screaming skull uh definitely didn't have any ratings or reviews anywhere that i looked um but it was nice to have it in the mix in the horror pack so all right see you next time